because of the way you were looking. I think, are you, were you going to record that? Yeah, because you can never just. <laughs> so, so I, I suppose I'm just going to, do you want to do an introduction or are we going to talk? Yeah, you might as well just go ahead and reiterate what you thought. Well, first off, I'll just okay. say this. You're having a topic about uh, being a part of a group. And sometimes well, what you hear first is the people who have an answer. When you ask a question, people already, you know, have thoughts formulated and they have an answer. But yet there's people who don't. And instead of coming up with their own answer, they pretty much listen to what the group says. And so I personally believe that those people, maybe instead of listening to what the group says, should be placed in some containment until they can come up with their own answers. And this brought, you know, and this is talking about something practical that we're going to do in the future as we um, have group uh, classes and group discussions because we want people to be able to hear themselves think before they get someone else's answer. And then Terry said. <laughs> Terry said that I, I relate to that because a lot of times um, I, you know, in the past, maybe not so much now, but in the past, I know we're going to university, we'll be discussing and it's like, I wouldn't have an answer because I hadn't really thought about it. I hadn't formulated an idea about it. And some people take time to formulate ideas and you need to be have that critical thinking aspect of, of yourself and just like, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. But we have a tendency, and I'm saying we collectively, is that we go along with what somebody, the, the loudest one, right? They, they're the ones who have the idea. The, and so people end up following but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's who they are, but they become a follower and that's how they become sheep. And then they don't stop and think for themselves anymore. And one of the things we're going to talk about in, in, in the card readings is about finding, um, finding who we are by connecting with our higher self and, um, listening to that inner voice that we have within us instead of suppressing it is listening to that voice because that's the voice that gives us the knowing how we should proceed and um yeah to, and, and today i was choosing a, a card for the group from denise lynn the sacred traveler and um <laughs> the card that i took took is surrendering to the journey and release control. And I think it's so important that we have to release control of what society, what, of what the greater consciousness has told us and, and open up to who we are instead of being told that we need to do this, we need to do that. And it's finding ourselves. And so that means surrendering to the journey is going within ourselves and finding the answers. Can't hear you, Erica. It corresponds with something that your, um, um, Jonathan sent yesterday. Um, I'm going to grab this link real quick and put it in the chat so that I can share screen, but that's just it. People uh, need enough time to develop their own opinions. But here it is, as we've been growing up, we're used to being programmed because our first thing is you got your parents and they tell you what to do and what to think. You should go to school for this. You should take this class and you should join the band and you should play football. And so we're so used to um, taking up uh, data from outside of our own awareness, which, you know, in the beginning, your parents are your safety net 
But if your parents don't have awareness of this kind of programming and they don't leave room for you to uh, find your own answers and figure out what to do, then they become those people with that extreme control over your thinking and your growth and your development. Uh, it was interesting. Yesterday, I was in the grocery store with my son, who's 16, and another lady, her son maybe was four. But what was interesting about it was that I was asked, I was telling my son, hey, pick out your own food. You like these kind of noodles, but which one do you want? Then he brought it back to me. I said, well, these ones, they got mushrooms and all this mushrooms, but that's cool because you could probably make some teriyaki chicken. I was like, do we got any teriyaki? So it was like, I was like, do we have any teriyaki? Instead of, because normally mom goes to the store and she buys everything herself. And then we got to the section with the teriyaki and, and instead he picked soy sauce. I said, well, that's not the same. And he was like, yeah, but I'd rather have this one instead. And, and we were going through the grocery store and right at the end of the aisle, there was a little kid, the little four-year-old, and his mom was making him pick out, like, which one do you want? Do you want this one or do you want that one? And we were like giving our kids choices. And I was just thinking, man, he's going to be able to go grocery shop on his own because he's been in here. He knows about the amino stuff that is similar to soy sauce. And then you got a choice. Okay, you go into the international. Like I was just, I was just like really excited about how we had been, he had to think. He had to actually think instead of me just telling him, go get this, go get that. And me thinking of the way. I'm pretty much done with my son though, because if because he he's gonna eat what he's gonna eat. So I know I gotta give him his choices. But a part of that autism development was that we learned that you can give them the one thing and they'll say, no, no, no. But if you say, do you want this or do you want that? They'll make a choice between the two. And um, a lot of us are feeling like we don't have choices, but we're not used to making the choices because we're constantly being told. So once you get in that parachute where someone's always there giving their advice, giving their choice, giving giving you the answer, like say in a group context, you 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 just be it becomes easy to um give in to the consensus, right? Because you're just well, well that's what we always do. I always do what you know one a part of um what is you call that thing? Um propaganda this when they teach you propaganda in school one of them is uh the the testimonial so you be well that person said it was good so you base your decision on that or it's the group consensus where it says nine out of ten dentists nine out of ten people say this and so we just we're just so given to it over time well and and i i think what happens is that we're we 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 are told this and, and we're, we are programmed, right? That's, that's just it. We're programmed to think this. We're programmed that, oh, we do this and this and this. Oh, it's Monday. We do this Tuesday. So there's, there's always the program. And do we have a choice? Yeah, we do. But it's easier to follow the program because that's the, that's the pattern that we've gotten into. And taking the step back and inviting your higher self in, right? And listening to that inner voice that is connected to your higher source will give you direction. And maybe the direction is to tell you to stop. And you know what? Today, you're just going to sit back and you're going to, I don't know, make cookies. And, and that's the best way for you to proceed on this day instead of trying to do... Um, you know, get your website fixed up. And I, that's nothing to, I'm just using those as examples. But sometimes we're just being forced, I should do this, I should do that, where we're not listening to the inner guidance and, and sometimes taking those moments to just sit back and listen can be the most productive because then we can get our thoughts in order. And, and we have so much there's so much information that we're being bombarded with 
we a lot of times we don't know how to think anymore so we just follow along with, oh this is what i'm supposed to do this is the way we're guided but we don't and we, we turn on the tv we turn on the news and they keep telling us the same thing and we watch uh, and we see commercials that we don't stop and really connect with our higher being and say what is the right way for me to proceed might not be new to you but but maybe it will i was just looking over this and it's like knocking my socks off um i remember learning propaganda in the third or fourth grade and it's weird that I don't know what kind of teacher she was. I don't know if an alien flew in and took over. I've never had anybody tell me that they've learned propaganda in school and never had anybody tell me that they've learned it, especially in elementary school. So I've been very alert for a very long time. And um, I was looking at the forms of propaganda just now. And the first one is emotional appeal. So that uses utilizes the emotions that trigger you that uh, they include powerful imagery. So personal stories, language, language that trigger fear, anger, sympathy, joy, or and they use it to sway opinions. Just so roll that through your mind, triggering fear, anger, sympathy, and joy, right? Um, one was name calling and demonization. So associating negative connotations with the target, propagandists aim to undermine their credibility and influence public opinion against them. Then there's the bandwagon effect, because you know, a lot of people have never gone over this. So let's just do that, right? And so the bandwagon exploits the human tendency to conform with a crowd. And that's what we're talking about but that everybody's adopting a particular viewpoint or behavior, encouraging others to join so you don't get left out. Uh, testimonials and endorsements. You know, that's what people are always trying to sell you something. This technique aims to persuade the audience by associating and endorsing a product with someone they respect or admire. And I remember this too, with someone um, wanted to make an argument against me and they used what they felt a person of authority, their opinion against mine. And I said, well, have you read this book for yourself? Because if you would like to tell me what you thought after you read it, I would like to hear that. But don't tell me what someone else said or try to use someone else as an authority figure because I don't, they're not my authority figure. So then there's this thing called the plain folk of feet appeal and politicians like to use this one because it's like I'm just like you and so you should trust me because I'm just like you um you know I'm they'll try to say of a certain class system and my mother worked hard and and so they simulate what it is that that you relate to so you should trust them and then there's transfer and so that's linking desired emotions to influence the opinions and shape concepts of others. So associating positive or negative emotions to transfer those to that particular cause or subject. So if you've been hurt before because people did this to you, this is why you should support this or not support this because remember how you felt when that happened? So then there's, we're loving this one, half truths and misinformation. <laughs> so they distort and manipulate the facts because they can tell you one part about it that's why like with memes and stuff i always like try to look it up to see well what why did they vote that into law what what is actually the reason that that happened because you're telling me a part this part but then you added this the, the stank on the back <laughs> to say that this was the reason when that is actually the reason and then there's repetition, because if you tell somebody something um, as many times, if you tell somebody something enough, then what? They're going to adopt it as a belief. You know, if it rains every day in Florida at three o'clock for one week straight, now I can tell everybody it rains every day in Florida at three o'clock, which is pretty funny, but it's almost true. It's almost true, right? It's a, it's a 
a partial uh, repetition. Had you heard or learned any of those before, Terry? Um, yeah, absolutely. I, but I, I don't. I didn't learn it in grade three, but I did learn about it when I went into university. Um, and my, I, I think we learned about some of it through school. But I can remember um, in my first year of university, our history, the history professor, he particularly <clears throat> made sure that we all understood about propaganda and we went over a lot of those things. And, and you know, it was by that time when you're 18, you have you're, you're you've developed more. And um, so there was more of that critical thinking. Although I have to say I was very fortunate when I was growing up because my father was one who always said, use your common sense. Don't be the follower. Don't always do that. But that was that was my upbringing. But I know, like I said, from, um, you know, going through university, that's when I the, that critical thinking was really very instilled in me from that one professor. And we are, we can always look back and you remember your grade th three teacher. I remember that professor. We have people in our lives that do affect us and affect our way of thinking. And I believe that those people are part of our, from a higher standpoint, they're there to, to teach us something if we're, if we're willing to accept and, and learn those particular, that particular information. And I think we all have those people, but we don't always listen to them. Right. So um, the whole thing about programming is we, we have to learn to enter our own data, right? And so I was going to go through this. And now when you put together the, the data entry skills versus what it actually means to be affected by propaganda, you can see this is why you got to have good data entry skills, right? Because you're entering the data into your computer, you're programming your own computer. Um, so one of them is attention to details. So you have to be meticulous throughout the data entry for accuracy, and it's essential to avoid errors and maintain integrity. One of them is typing speed, but I would say that's, um, well, the speed of input, how quickly do you learn concepts? Because, but then also when someone's trying to give you information, and they're trying to program you with this information, how quickly can you choose, pick out the errors? How quickly can you pick up on, on what they're putting down? Um, I think you know. Can you expand on that, Terry? Because I think you know what I'm saying. Well, I, I, I know, and I, I maybe I'm, I'm going into is, but it's like when you read a book, some people are, are speed readers, right? And so they read and they get the gist of it. Some people will read and they'll take and they'll read line for line and word for word and contemplate what's being said in that paragraph. And I think those, it, yeah, you can be a speed reader, you can be a fast typist, but if you're not processing the information, you're just adding, you're just adding more and more data without, without being discerning of what the data is that you're putting in there. So reading between the lines. Contemplate. Yeah, that? reading between the lines. So as this thing is coming at you, are you able to discern and read between the lines? You know, if some of, I don't even want to use any examples. I'm scared to use an example right now. But anyway, when people are coming at you <laughs> with, their, with their information and they're like, you know, uh, I want to, I want to, yeah, you just got to be able to read between the lines because sometimes people are telling you something and it seems harmless, but then if you really break it down, it's like, wait a minute, we're doing what? what? What is the new thing we're doing? So then knowledge of the yeah. data yeah. entry software. So knowledge of the data. Um, a lot of times what I notice is that people don't have knowledge of the data. Like what is quantum? Um, what's quantum entanglement? And so you're you're listening to the concepts that people are throwing at you and you're like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. 
But what I like to tell people, something I used to tell Jermaine too, is like a lot of people don't understand a lot of the words that you're using. So you have to define the terms and break the terms down so that if somebody is really going to ingest data or programming or information, you have to know what is actually being said. If someone is using, if I tell you, let's do yoga, you think, oh, well, yoga is what? It's really easy, right? It's just exercise and stretching, or is it? Because yoga is actually a part of a religion, actually. And it ha- each pose is a sigil. And so there's a lot of information behind yoga that if someone just says yoga, you have a simple uh, idea what it is, but it's way bigger than what you think. So do you have knowledge of the data? And then time management. How much time are you actually taking in so much information from everyone else without, like you said, sitting with yourself and deciding for yourself where this fits in your life? Then there's a keen eye for errors. Like, did that person just... Maybe not lie on purpose, but present you a portion of information that is false. Because I notice a lot of times people throw around memes and and, and articles, but then they haven't researched them themselves. You know, like videos and pictures and stuff. I like to run it through my little search engine to be like, hey, this says this, but that's not really what this was meant to be. Or this is Photoshopped or this is embellished in some way. And and then familiarity with validation. That's basically like the same thing and communication and collaboration. So, and then continuous learning, what's that say? Continuous learning. So those are things like uh, doing more research. All of the last four, it just seems like do more research, do more research, do more research, learning, 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 and not necessarily just taking in what other people have. So I'll back up. And I'm just going to say the learning is really important as we, you know, like we never stop being a student. We never stop learning. And it's easy to follow what somebody has told us, but, you know, it's it's doing the research. And, and I, I just want to go back to you know, talking about propaganda in general. I mean, we can go on Facebook, we can go on Telegram, we can see part of all these groups. And what happens if you look at the patterns, right? They are telling you the same thing over and over again. And just because you've been told it over and over again, does it mean that it's the truth? Does it mean that it's fact? It means that we're now, you know, I'm just using me collectively. We're now in that in that um, flow of thinking. But if you stop and, and stop and analyze, wait a minute, why are they always saying these same things over and over and over again? They want us to believe that that's the only truth. And, and there's that's their form of propaganda. How do you, you know, like you repeat, it's a repetitive process. So with that repetitiveness, um, I I think we find, you know, there's, we we won't necessarily go into it, but there's a whole thing with neuro-linguistic programming and the MKUltra and stuff. It's as we, as we get into those, um, get caught into that particular pattern, then then, then they start to, we start to move along a stream that we've lost our ability to critically think. And we're just, we're flowing along with it. And that's how people become sheep. I don't think that they're meant to be sheep. It's just that they are easily programmed and they, they go into that flow. And, and maybe it's because, you know, as, as children, maybe, you know, it's the school system. Maybe it's the way, oh, well, that's, I'm telling you to do it that way. And that's the only way. And maybe we have to step back. And so. and yeah. To think. Because I said I so. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's so funny because one of the parts of programming was define the problem and then plan the solution. What I think a lot happens you, you hear people trying to sell you stuff all the time, like, 
Um, there's going to be an emergency signal and we're not going to be able to go to the grocery store and gold is going to go down in prices and the money is not going to be worth anything and you need to sign a non-disclosure agreement. I got to sell you the problem and then sell you the solution, right? Because I have to create the problem and then sell you the solution. And that's where I went in 2020. And I was like, you know what? It's really interesting how everybody's selling um, buckets of rice and dried food and, and you know, oh, get XRP. And, and I'm not telling people not to do it, but I'm just telling you when you're listening to somebody pound that in you, you have to start thinking, why are they telling me this? Why are they selling me this? Why are they offering me this? Because I feel like people are campaigning. They're, it's like everyone's running for president. Look at me, buy from me, shop with me, get readings from me, get, you know, watch my channel and watch only my channel and get all your information from here and, and stay plugged in. And if I keep you with suspense of this is what's going to happen in three days, the suspense is going to bring you back in three days, right? Because I've created this, this the problem, right? But you know, with this suspense and, oh, you got to stay here to find out what's going to happen. Really? I can't just look outside my door, you know? And I really got to in 2020 to say, oh, wow, there's somebody in North Carolina in the mountains that doesn't even have a TV. Boy, they're sitting on their porch drinking sweet tea and having a good life with their animals and getting their food off the farm. And they're not even stressed out, right? Are they any worse off by being unplugged? I don't think so. But instead, like you say, people keep repeating things and it's like, oh, this is the echo chamber because you only go here to what? Confirm what you already believe and repeatedly be programmed with it over and over. And it's like polarized information. It's like to the extreme left, to the extreme right. There's no room for well, it might be a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And there's no room to pivot. There's no room. It's uh, it's not flexible for people at all inside these chambers. So you got to get in or you're going to get kicked out. You got to get down or lay down, right? <laughs> get with it <laughs> or get the hell out. <laughs> and, and what happens is then you start to realize, well, Okay, there's some truth here, there's some truth there, but you can't, but but these different factions want you either here or here, right? But if you're here, you're 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 um you're being attacked from both ends because you're you're with them, or I'm not with them, but I'm not with them, and it's just like this constant pulling, and you know, you can be the observer, but they're going to want to pull you in one way or the other. And, and it takes inner strength. And that's why I'm saying you've got to connect with your higher self to find that aspect of yourself that you can make the decision for yourself without being pulled um, into a particular pattern. Yeah, we thought it was cool to vote for Pedro, but vote for you. Choose you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're not voting for Pedro anymore. <laughs> Remember yeah. that Napoleon Dynamite? I love that. But yeah, just just choose you, and uh, we'll go on to your card reading. Okay, sounds good. Hello, Jonathan. Hello, Jax. Hey. How are you today, Jax? I'm good. I'm just watering sod. You're just what? Watering sod. Oh, watering sod. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you said watering thought, and I thought, what? <laughs> sod. <clears throat> and Jonathan, are you driving? I'm at my dad's. Good day, everybody. Oh. Yeah. Hi. I'm just relaxing for now. I think I might stay here until tomorrow and then and then go to um, Halifax. Okay. Pack everything up. But, yeah. Last night was rough. <laughs> was it? 
It was it was really it rained. It rained all yesterday. It rained in oh. it rained in where was it? So it rained from rained from Ontario through to Quebec and all the way mm-hmm. down to Maine and all the way here. Yeah. So it, it wow. rained in, yeah, it rained in every state and every province as I was in. <laughs> and so it was just uh yeah. Yeah, I saw the, the, you, po- you posted the video of it raining, and I'm thinking, okay, that's a lot of rain. <laughs> but <laughs> you had more than that. Oh, my word, yeah. yeah. Any trouble getting through the border? Zero. I, uh, there was the first, the first time I went through, um, they were like, do you have anything? Because I remember I had my swords, too, in the back. <laughs> Because I didn't leave yeah. them. And okay. I was like, oh, yeah, I use them part of my uh, Qigong and uh, I use them with uh, creating art. He's like, oh, yeah, what kind of art? So I just showed him the lightsabers and it all drew the drew them all in, right? <laughs> They're like, oh, yeah, you, yeah. Can, you can go. Yeah, they were super intrigued. So had me out lighting them up and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, May uh, the force be with you. But again, but again, that it was it was another another uh, good experience to see how people are drawn to it, right? Naturally, right, right. So, so Jonathan, I drew a card for you from the Sacred yeah. Traveler. Yeah, I don't know whether you can see it. Was that the first one you posted? Uncovering treasure. What was that? No, this is a different one. It's for you. It's uncovering the treasure beneath the surface oh. lies great bounty. Mm. <laughs> so, so you're uncovering aspects of yourself on this journey mm-hmm. right yeah this you've had um you've had many um it was important for you to take this journey on yourself by yourself mm-hmm. um that because you are finding aspects that have been lying beneath underneath mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. That was my night card? journey last night. What's that? What's did that? you do the group card? I did do the group card right at the beginning. The sacred traveler. Oh, okay. I'm lost. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I did do that one. All right, right from the beginning, I talked about the sacred traveler and the journey, right? 